I've made so many storytelling mistakes. Nej, jag inte köra in det andra. Nej, nej, nej. It's ridiculous. This is what I've learned. Really professional for the film crew to be getting served beer on a set. I'm not complaining. So we got here to an island, Porto Santo. Documentaries are powerful. They shed light on important topics and reveal the truth. Okay, don't come out. They educate, challenge perspectives, and inspire action. So, so far to travel. Giving a voice to marginalized communities and uncover hidden truths. What if I told you that the stories we believe, the narratives we hold so tightly, may not always be as they seem? That every film you love uses storytelling techniques to trick you. Things are never as they seem. But before going into that, let me break down what a great story really is. Filmmakers often neglect how important a story is. Thinking that, you know, great visual storytelling is the same as having a great story. Or that a strong character is enough for people to care. But technical brilliance won't compensate for a weak story. I've learned that the hard way. When I used to pitch to TV and streaming services, I always heard, yeah, it looks beautiful, whoa, but where's the story? And I just struggled so much with understanding what, what did they really mean? I, I wondered that for a long time, but I think I figured it out. It doesn't matter how talented you are artistically. If the story is bad, the film is gonna be bad. It's a sign to commissioning editors and people buying your film that you don't know what you're doing. To, to, um, um, put out the dogs from here. Now I think most stuff that is made is super boring. But there's a craft to selling an idea and storytelling is a crucial part of that. This is how you tell a great conflict driven story. Pitch it simple, and then evolve it as you make it. Lie to them. A story is more than just a topic. And it follows a character's journey towards reaching an important goal they have. You need to introduce the goal early, because it creates the hook and propels the narrative forward which leads to uh, personal transformation. To create conflict, it's crucial to understand why your character wants and needs something. In the film The Pearl of Africa, the forbidden love story became a quest to win that right, driving the whole conflict. As the story progresses, the character encounters numerous obstacles along the journey to achieve their goal. Many stories follow the three-act structure. Act one introduces the conflict and may show the character's hesitation to take action. Then a significant event forces them to act. Homosexuals should be put to death. Yes. The anti-gay protesters shouted slogans and waved placards in what was dubbed the Million Man March Against Homosexuality. At the end of Act 1, a major obstacle uh, causes the character to momentarily give up. In Act 2, they renew their strength and continue to pursue their goal. Towards the end of Act 2, they encounter an even bigger challenge. I was scared at first, but I so wanted to claim my space. But now, with me on the front page, it wouldn't be possible. 
intensifying their desire to quit. And then act three. It pushes the character to take a final risky action to achieve their goal. I want to be able to wear a bikini and be in a sunshine. I want to have inner validation. It's confusing looking at yourself when I see different body parts for different genders on the same body. The climax tests their resolve, making it seem like they will give up often experiencing a profound loss that changes them as human beings. For instance, they might lose a loved one. This transformation ultimately allows them to succeed. Now, all of this, it usually gets baked into the three-act structure, which I used to hate. I felt like it was predictable, boring, and yeah, I struggled to see how my ideas would fit into it. But I've learned to love it as a framework. I've often found myself wondering what my story really is. Often it changes throughout the making of a film, and having a structure to lean on is it's really great because it helps you to stay on course. Nowadays, I use the three-act structure as a guide, not as a rigid format that I have to follow. But I've used this to create a free storytelling cheat sheet for you guys. Uh, it's in the description, so check it out. It's a step-by-step -step pool that can help you build a great story. But this story structure, it's why we lie. There was a time when I thought documentaries were real. Even the news was real. Then, when I started working with media, I realized that it was all a lie. This became even more clear as I was dubbed an expert on any given topic just from making a film about it. In interviews, I wanted to say that I don't really know anything about this topic. I'm just an explorer. But I just answered the questions uh, with a smile. Why do you think filmmakers do this? Take this scene, for instance. It's from my film, The Pearl of Africa, that sold to Netflix. Cleo and Nelson are on a couch. They're in hiding. People are out to attack them. They are thinking of what to do next. And in the edit, this is placed before they flee the country. But this whole scene, it's directed. It's fake. They didn't sit here in hiding. They had, but I wasn't there for that moment. So I faked it. Most documentaries do that. Werner Herzog did it in Grizzly Man. Michael Moore did it in Fahrenheit 9-11. They do it in most of their films. When I released my first film, Zero Silence, I faced criticism for alleged bias. I created this film driven by my passion, intending to share my friend's heroic struggle against an oppressive regime. Uh, I don't want to let people down because lots of others let them down. So what, what message will I be sending to people? The narrative was presented from their perspective, amplifying their voice in a world where democracy and freedom of speech had been seized. Conflict can manifest in various ways from documenting the battle for Tahrir Square to capturing opposing viewpoints. It took me numerous films for me to handle it well. One thing that I've realized is that stories and drama are the most compelling when individuals hold differing opinions. This dynamic allows the audience to participate emotionally, encouraging them to pick sides and think for themselves. But how far can we push the boundaries of truth in a pursuit for a compelling documentary?
every film has a selected point of view. A lens through which the narrative is shaped. We strive to create scenes that feel natural, yet they may require some direction to convey the desired message. Ask yourself, where do you draw the line of truth? To see something is much more powerful than to hear about it or to read about it. But you can burn these stages by just showing the viewers only one video clip of what happens inside a police station. And back in 2006 and 2007, we were receiving tons of those clips at the time. OK, so I have a cheat sheet. It's a step-by-step -step guide to how to develop a strong story structure. This is what I use when I make my films for Netflix. By following this guide, you'll instantly become a much better storyteller. Johnny's got a good plan. Try 